everybody. Um, I thought I would make a quick video since, whoa, <laughs> my shade just went up automatically. Um, since I've been away for a while, I've been an irresponsible YouTuber. Um, and I thought tonight was going to be a complete washout. It's Friday, close to seven o'clock right now. Um, we had a tornado watch that was supposed to go on until around 10 tonight and thunderstorms that were supposed to start early today and go until 8 and they kept postponing it and then it was going to be like all night long, you know, possible hail, all these things. Uh, but it was really just about 40 minutes of gloom and now the clouds are breaking up. So um, I will probably be heading out of here soon to do what? I don't know. But um, I thought I would just um, talk about some fun things that I've done recently. Uh, the reason I didn't make a, I like to make one video a week, usually on a weekend um, or right afterwards, uh, but I was out of town. I gave myself a three day weekend and um, Evan and I rented a car and did one of our um, fairly inexpensive jaunts to um, a nearby cute town that has some compelling natural aspects. Well, this one does uh, have quite a few of them, um, which I'll talk about in a second. But uh, we usually wind up spending, you know, a, a significant amount of money on a car to rent because that's what happens if you live here and you don't own one. Um, and the rental places charge a lot. Um, and uh, we drove to Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania which is about two and a half hours if your GPS is working. That is, if you have a GPS. <laughs> Evan thought that he could get away with just using his phone and like the phone wasn't, um, it couldn't find the GPS. It was like scanning for GPS and the voice, the robotic female voice that dictates, you know, how many feet you have before you have to merge into a left lane and, you know, take this exit, take that exit. Um, it wasn't coming on and there were multiple traffic problems getting out of our neighborhood. So we were delayed mm -hmm. an hour and a half going out there. Um, anyway, big fiasco, uh, but we eventually arrived. And by the way, I was sleep deprived because I um, was awake for a couple of hours in the middle of the night, but I'm, I will give you some advice on how to deal with that if you're ever you know, desperate, desperate to salvage the trip that you spent money on. Um, so yeah, so Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania is, um, if you've never heard of it, it is a Victorian town um, that was founded in the very early 1800s. Uh, they um, brought coal in from nearby, um, just a big railroad town um, in the Poconos. Uh, people go out there to um, enjoy the rafting. I'm not into water sports or water of any kind. I don't like it. <laughs> I'm perhaps because I'm a Sagittarius, I'm a fire sign, I'm a fire dragon in Chinese astrology. I just, I don't like water um, I, unless it's far away and I'm just looking at it. But um, yeah, I'm I, actually a friend of mine from high school um, was on a rafting trip and her husband fell off and floated down the river and drowned. So, you know, just stuff like that. I, I can't, I, that would be me because um, I'm so unlucky in my physical environment. Um, but, uh, so we went out there, we got in around two in the afternoon um, and we stayed at the inn, the, uh, the inn at Jim Thorpe is what it's called. Um, it's haunted. I mean, everyone in town will tell you, yes, it's haunted. Uh, I used to work there. Um, I would clean up at night in the restaurant and uh, blow out all the candles. I'd turn around and they'd be lit again and stuff like that. Um, we didn't we didn't see a ghost. It was a very friendly um, atmosphere, in my opinion, uh, very sanguine. So if it was haunted, they, they aren't bad ghosts. Um, yeah, but a really great place to stay, right in the middle of town, and yet it's um, fairly quiet. It kind of has a uh, New Orleans feel, like with a balcony that overlooks um, Broadway, which is their main street, and you are in the mountains. Um, they're covered in trees. Uh, I've been there when, um, this was 
11 years ago, I, I did visit. Um, the weather was much cooler. I didn't enjoy our trip as much. Um, but the trees are gorgeous in the fall. Um, everything was green. It was just this, this immense, like, emerald city of green. And the trains are um, so charming. We took a train ride. The second day we were there, the first day we were there, as I said, I was sleep deprived. Um, the first day we, um, hang on, I'm, I'm a very uh, desiccated mouth. Sorry. Um, so here's a trick. Uh, drinking alcohol, spirits, not wine or beer or something that's going to just make you tired. But um, having, for me on this occasion, it was absinthe because at the best restaurant in town, which um, we, dine, we dine there later and it was fabulous. I'll talk about that too. Um, but this restaurant, Tony Stella's Encore, has in the back the oldest absinthe bar in America outside of New Orleans. So of course I had to go. That was our first stop after dropping off our luggage and parking. And um, they actually, they had a really good selection. It was, you know, it was expensive. The restaurant is really expensive. Um, but they had a fairly good selection of absinthe. Um, I had the St. George. They didn't give us me, I, Evan just ordered a, like a pool of wine, um, not knowing it would be as, humongous as it was um but uh yeah generous pour um really nice um so what you do is you trick yourself into not feeling fatigued anymore or um i don't know it's like you you you, you come to identify the way that you feel as a sleep deprived human if you go through this enough <laughs> And um, the alcohol just sort of tricks you into feeling completely different. So um, you're a little loopy, and that's great because all people who are tipsy are loopy um, or drunk. And I wouldn't recommend getting drunk so much, just having enough to make you a little tipsy. In my case, that takes very little. Um, so we did that, and then we went for kind of a woozy walk. Um, Evan found there's like this... Uh, since it's a Victorian town, so all the design elements are conspiring to make you feel like this, you know, very romantic um, uh, um, vampire type of feeling. Um, he found a, um, a meadery underground among uh, some other shops. There was a, um, a fancy, smelly soap shop, which I um, enjoyed. I bought the souvenir, strawberry shortcake soap. And um, there are a few witch, pagan, witch and pagan shops there too. Um, one of the best pagan shops I've been to is gorgeous. They had like everything you could possibly want, um, especially decorative items. The meadery offered free tastings of everything, everything that they had, but it, um, not, they didn't have an extensive array of meads. They had like six or seven. And uh, so that just sort of stacked the um, I'm no longer sleep deprived sensation for me. And I walked away with um, a pricey but a very delicious bottle of um, uh, one of their, for them it was a sweeter variety of mead. It had um, hibiscus flavoring um, or a tincture. I'm not sure how they did it, but. Um, it sort of tastes like hibiscus tea plus mead. Um, wonderful stuff. So anyway, once you are past the goofy feeling, you get the rebound effect. You know, if you haven't slept, they say don't try to, you know, drink yourself into oblivion because you'll experience the rebound and you will feel much more awake the way that, kind of the way, in my experience, the way that Benadryl can have a, um, what do they call it? Um, the uh, counter, uh, there's a term for it. Anyway, I'm, I don't want to sit here trying to think of the right words. Um, waste your time. So yeah, so that's what happens. So I salvaged the night for both of us by um, having some delicious absinthe. And uh, then we um, meandered to back to Tony Stella's Encore where, oh my God, this was possibly the best dining experience of my life, if not, well, 
at, at least in the top three. Um, there was a place in Orlando that had a lavish, it was like black tie, you know, four courses in this castle-y structure um, in Lake Buena Vista near my apartment when I first moved there in 1998, or nine, 99, sorry, 99. Um, anyway, so that aside, this place was um, owned by Tony Stella, is. Um, he kind of operates the whole, uh, I don't know, he, he, he gives himself various outposts at the restaurant. He greets people at the front, then he comes by and he talks to you and tells you about the specials, and he checks on all the customers, like, all night long. He's the head chef, so he's designing the entrees and everything. Um, very charming, you know, nice-looking Italian man. Um, he seemed to really like me. <laughs> um, we were seated next to a grand piano with a young woman, a lovely young woman, who, uh, like, somehow right off the bat, I started talking to her about Tori, like, early Tori Amos, and she was like, oh, I love early Tori, early Tori Amos! Um, and then I was thinking I should have her play, um, from, uh, uh, oh, what do you call it? Um, um, oh, crap. Memory, memory. There's no way to pause this. Um, from the movie. It'll come to me later. Anyway, it's not a well-known song. Actually, let me... You know, this always happens when I'm making these videos. I get, like, stage fright, and I can't remember what I'm talking about. Um, I keep thinking Sparks. That's not it. Uh, Tori Amos soundtrack. <laughs> Sorry soundtrack from from even Google isn't telling me what the song is even what the soundtrack is oh here is a listing of all the soundtracks okay god this is terrible um mm -mm -mm, not higher learning no not twister great expectations Yes, Siren. Okay, so I was thinking of Siren, how I love singing that song, and how wonderful it would be if she um, uh, uh, did a cover of that for me right there. So um, she was the one who suggested it, uh, and she said how much she loved the song. And Anyway, so um, there was also a songbook circulating for people to make requests um, and she apparently does lots of metal covers. I saw some favorites by Wasp in there, Sleeping in the Fire. It's even on one of her CDs, which is awesome. I, I love that song. Um, so she did, at Evan's request, Nutshell by Alice in Chains, and I, I, like, started crying, and I was trying not to, because that's embarrassing. <laughs> but it was so emotional and she was right there and it was just so intimate and then uh, we ordered our food we got the special which was crab cakes unbreaded no bread i've had a ton a shit ton of crab cakes in my life i'm from the gulf coast the florida part of Gul the gulf coast and i've been to new orleans and they i thought i had the best ever at uh, meals from the heart which is in the french market there you never want anything breaded you don't want to go to these places that do like the heavy um, Creole sauces, that's bullshit. They're covering up bad meat. This, these things were just it, it, the most flavorful, naturally sweet crab meat. Um, they had a nice light crust, you know, they're pan seared on top, and he had some sort of like oniony things and some teriyaki sauce mixed in and the mustard seed sauce that you could use if you wanted to, but I'm very sparing with that type of thing. I just like, I like the meat to come through. Um, really good. $45 entree. We really could have just split one because the portions were big. Um, and yeah, yeah, uh, it was delightful. It was delightful. Um, and then we visited, uh, I'm just talking on and on about this. Um, we, we did a lot of things. I'll just cut to the chase, or the most interesting part. There was a, um, a man named Aza Packer who was responsible for, um, well, he was one of many millionaires who lived there in the mid-19th century. Um, at that point, um, this little town 
had the highest concentration of millionaires in the United States, so the evidence of wealth is abundant. Um, and they've, they've left a lot of these uh, relics, like there's a, um, an Episcopalian church um, of St. Mark and St. Luke, I believe that's it, with um, a priceless um, collection, if you can call it that, um, architectural collection, it's built in, of Tiffany windows, just amazing, amazing. The place was last appraised in the 50s and um, they just, they can't afford to pay any more insurance on the place at this point. There's no point in reappraising it, but uh, gorgeous um, to see it still standing. It might not be there in 20 years. But, um, so Aza Packer, who um, was, I believe, a member of Congress at one point, kind of, I'm looking at my little timeline here. Uh, let's see. Night, uh, 1855 is when he founded the Lehigh Valley Railroad. Um, by today's standards, this man would be a billionaire. His mansion... Typically, when you um, when you visit these places and get a tour, the uh, tour guide will point out that you know these are replicas of the furniture. It's period appropriate, but it's not the original. Everything's original except what was changed during the course of his um, living years there. He did make some upgrades, but you walk in, it's 1861. This is exactly how it was. I looked at the book. Uh, collection in the um, first room that you come to and I was just I was you know taken aback at the um, the titles that were on display and I asked our very cool possibly 90 year old tour guide she was um, she was amazing I you know she gives me hope for myself um, better posture than me she had great posture she was very very thin and she had very spare shoulders um, she uh, is also a, um, uh, a book lover, and she said these were first editions. <laughs> Unbelievable. I could have purloined a book. I could have purloined a book. She would have known. Um, but anyway, so it, like the same curtains that were, that were there um, were still hanging uh, because it's, it's like uh, this huge ordeal to fold them. They can the um the gold thread can break apparently so they just would leave them up there they've been up there ever since they were hung um <laughs> very cool and they have swings this place uh there's a little park near the aza packer mansion um and uh evan and i uh on both days we took advantage of that and everything is very um uh steep the the hills the leading up to the mountains so you've got all of this elevation setting as a backdrop as you know lush green everywhere um in front of you and uh actually the there's a a mansion adjacent to this one the Hen a harry packer mansion which served as the model for the haunted mansion at uh walt disney world in orlando home away from home. Um, so yeah, that's pretty cool. They do murder mystery um, tours or uh, murder mystery nights there. They're pretty expensive. Um, and they have opened a little bar that you have to pay $5 just to enter. But I was like, um, can we come take a peek inside? <laughs> we, we're just looking for making plans for later. But we didn't go back, of course, because we had to get back to the city on a Sunday. Um, all right. So that's that. Um, I'm sure there's more I could add, more interesting tidbits, but I don't want to make this too long. Um, I did something brave this morning. Perhaps you haven't seen the video where I mentioned this, um, friend type person, uh, who was very bad to me, um, who I had never confronted about any of her evils, um, and I really needed to, uh, essentially the prime, um, incident 
uh, uh, or the first time her um, duplicitous nature came out um, was in 2013, September of 2013. And I was in denial about it for the longest time. Uh, what happened, we're both, she more than me at this point, but uh, we both like dressing up and we're both Rennies. Um, I'm, a, I'm a Rennie before I'm anything else in subculture land. And uh, we had met um, not even a year prior to this and became friends very quickly. Uh, she has many virtues. I had great fun spending time with her. She's a really good, um, lively communicator, especially in writing. Um, which is important to me since I like writing. Uh, there was a costume at an Etsy shop called Elphic Wear that I was very interested in. And I, I don't go nuts spending money on expensive costumes. I'm very choosy, as I am with my friends. Um, and she was someone who I had carefully selected and it was like, okay, I will invest my time in this person. Um, it is rewarding. <laughs> uh, I invested a lot of time in, in our friendship, actually, and um, as did she. Uh, I had sent her a text early one morning because I saw this um, just amazing ensemble, dark green velvet um, elfic dress with um, leather, like a, I think it might have had a, a leather, brown leather bodice and an arm piece, just gorgeous. And the designer, Angelica, I believe she's in Portugal, um, is the same size as us. She's very thin. Um, so I texted this friend of mine who I will call, I will, let's call her Jezebel. <laughs> um, so Jezebel, uh, didn't answer my text for a while. I was just asking her opinion. I told her I saw this really lovely ensemble. Um, what did she think of it? You know, should I get it? I, I should have just gone ahead and purchased it without consulting her, uh, as I learned. Um, because she bought it out from under me. <laughs> They're one of a kind items. She bought it out from under me. And I looked back at our correspondence. There was a correspondence through Facebook um, from way back. It like took forever for this stuff to load because we had like 3,000 messages uh, built up over the years. Um, she responded late, oh, sorry, I just got your text. Um, I think maybe she was like trying to direct me towards some other velvet gown that Moresca makes, if you're familiar with Renfair clothing. You would know the name. Um, anyway, uh, the next day, there was like a little bit back and forth, and the next day, um, I have the saved messages from my correspondence with the designer at Elphic Wear, Angelica, who said, I'm sorry, it's sold. Um, to another lady, um, the entire thing, uh, blah, blah, blah. And when I wrote Jezebel to let her know that I, I waited too long, I, I guess, which was amazing because, you know, it was like, it sold as soon as I started thinking about it, um, or talking about it with her. Uh, she didn't own up to it. Um, we went out dancing, like, the next week, um to, of course, a goth thing. And she said, I have a surprise for you. Do you remember that um, elf ensemble that you were interested in? Um, well, I have one. And if you want to borrow it, you can. Um, blah, blah, blah. And I was, we were drinking and I was just thinking, this is very weird. This is very weird. This is very weird. And I didn't want to even for a moment, entertain the possibility that she's the one who bought it. I just buried the thought. I didn't want. To, I couldn't. De I could not deal with it because it, at this point she was like my best friend. Okay, um, and yeah. So because it was the end of that was September. It was towards the end of the season for um, fair in um, New York City or the New York area. Um, she wasn't able to wear it until the following year. And uh, at this point, a number of other 
um, entanglements had kind of cropped up and, you know, little red flags, okay, she's not exactly who I thought she was, um, blah, blah, blah. She wore the, ga the it was, you know, l long to the, um, to the ground. Um, she wore the gown to the fair, I think, when she came with her husband, and I said, oh, uh, isn't that the costume that I wanted? And she, she got very flustered. Something I've never, ever seen from her. It was like, she made another one, and then she just started talking to somebody else. And I started talking to somebody else, and I didn't revisit it because I knew this was a bold-faced lie and that the designer made one-of-a-kind items. And I just didn't confront her. And, it, like, over the next year, she just became meaner and meaner. And it was like this, this whole thing with, oh, my God. She had gotten back from New Orleans. This person has a kind of a problem with eating sweets and um, can't control herself. She's in fairly good shape. I mean, she's small enough to fit in the same clothes as me. But it was this very combative thing. We were at an event and with another friend um, standing by and she's like, why would you go to a culinary destination and not eat their food? And she turned to the other friend and she said, I mean, for you, you're a vegan. I can understand that. But then she, it was like all me, like, Health, super health conscious Stacy is being attacked now. This is someone who is very like pro this group who um, deals with oppression, you know, standing up for women and all of this stuff. But this is how she treats her bestest friends. Okay, so and there's really nothing I could say except, you know, I, I don't fill my body with crap. That's why, <laughs> um, except alcohol sometimes. Um, but just things like that on a frequent basis um, and things that were even worse than that I will say um, so yeah so anyway um, I haven't it got really bad and I just decided I'm not gonna she's extremely unsupportive of anything that relates to my success um, in uh, publishing poetry or doing anything like that um, art not even with art you'd think that's kind of universal if you don't like poetry, okay, but this is a very good painting, or this is, it's, um, objectively speaking. So, uh, yeah, so this morning I was looking back through my Etsy messages again, and, um, I just said to myself, you know what, I haven't even seen her in nearly a year. Um, I've really derived no benefit from having her in the periphery of my social sphere at this point. She doesn't live in the city anymore. She lives upstate. And uh, I just, I need to confront her for my own sake. Um, so I did. And she hasn't written me back. Uh, here's what I said. Here's what I said to Jezebel. I said, Hi. Sorry to importune you, but there's something nagging at me that I need to ask you about to clear my mind. I had tried to put it out of my mind completely, but I was just in my Etsy box recently and in exchange with Angelica at Elphic Wear, staring me in the eyes from September 2013 brought it all back. I'm sure you recall my interest in a certain green velvet elf dress that you, brought, that you bought right after I expressed my interest to you and asked for your opinion about it. I tried to deny to myself that's what actually happened since it would be unconscionable for me to do that to a stranger who asked for my opinion, let alone a close friend. I couldn't bear the thought that you'd actually do that. It didn't make any sense. Anyway, a year or so later, when you wore the ensemble to the New York Fair and I said, isn't that the costume I wanted to buy? You replied, the designer made another one, which I knew to be a bold place lie. She told me outright that she only makes one-of-a-kind items. That was this morning. I asked her. She replied right away, um, confirming all of it. So I just, I was like, okay, you know, there's no, there's no shadow of a doubt here anymore. Um, otherwise, I could have bought one myself. Uh, and this, then again, it, it wouldn't be an issue if it was known by anyone that she makes numerous um, renditions of the same, even the same 
like variations on a theme. I mean, something similar, but there's nothing similar. It's one, she likes to, one and one only, she likes to have um, each of her customers have a special item. So anyway, um, so I guess I'm just wondering how you justify this type of behavior. I would never think that the value of a friend is merely a pile of velvet, no matter how pretty it is. Seen at 8.18 a.m. Maybe she'll surprise me. Maybe she'll surprise me and say, you know what? I have a problem when I, I know that she has a problem. She can't resist buying things that she can't afford. Maybe she'll have some integrity and just confess that this was another instance where um, that problem uh, made itself known and she's very sorry and she values my friendship still and blah, blah, blah. So I don't know, <laughs> hasn't happened yet. <laughs> Um, but I'll let you know if it does. And this is 31 minutes and two seconds. That's too much. That's too much. You're probably not even watching anymore. <laughs> but if you are, sayonara. Um, I'm going to try to find a place to go get a fancy cocktail. I can talk Evan into going out while the tornado watch is still happening. Even though I'm watching only a fairly misty uh, rose-colored sunset out there. It's not raining anymore. It's not raining. It's humid. My hair will look bad if we go out, but anyway, that's all. Have a good weekend.